Okay, let's take what you've learned on foreign while loops to the next level, to something that will be uh, actually much more useful in data science tasks, or at least equally as useful. So when you run a loop, we're talking about uh, a loop through one dimension. So before we had a book list, and we looped through every item of the book list. The book list was our dimension that we were looping through multiple examples of books. It's common uh, that we actually need to loop through two dimensions at once. Kind of like a spreadsheet has both rows and columns to represent data, uh, we often need to loop through both to clean data. So for example, we want to loop through every row and every column to get to each cell in a data set in order to make sure that we've had a chance to clean everything. So let's learn how to do nested loops first with the for loop. So for this task, just to demonstrate how this works, I want to go through and I've taken uh, the 2020 uh, list of most popular girl first names and middle names. I've got three daughters, so this is a topic that's come up a few times in my house. Anyway, uh, what I want is a for loop that will go through and create every possible combination of first names and middle names out of all of these names. So pretty straightforward. We're going to say for, and I'm going to say fn just to shorten it. This is going to represent each first name in the first names list. So remember, it doesn't matter what I actually call this variable. I just have to understand conceptually what it's going to represent. As we go through one name at a time, it's going to represent that name. So the first time through, it's going to represent Emma. So for, just think Emma um, in first names, I have to tell it for each one of the names in first names, colon, and remember when I hit enter, it spaces in two, uh, two spaces or a tab, and that means that anything that comes after this is what happens each time through the loop. So for each one of those first names, I now want to loop through each one of the middle names. So I'm going to have a second for MN in middle names. Now I'm going to print out, whoops, I didn't need to do that. Now I'm going to print out uh, FN. Let's concatenate a space uh, MN. Whoops, don't forget my concatenator. Or alternatively, another way to do the same thing is just to say FN comma MN, and it'll automatically put a space between them. So let's go ahead and run this. It's always slow the first time through. All right, here we go. Scrolling through my list, uh, each combination, oh, scroll down, there we go, of all of our different names. So how many times does it actually loop? Well, the first time through for each FN, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times how many middle names? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it should have a total of 56 lines. So that's a for loop with a nested for loop inside of it. Let's now do an example of a while loop with a nested while loop. So down here, this one, um, let's do this. Okay, let's keep this next example simple here. What I want to do is simply pr print out a, a list of coordinates for a spreadsheet. So a database table or a spreadsheet is a combination of cells made up of row and column coordinates. So I uh, simply want to print out all the possible cells on a spreadsheet that has uh, 10 rows, 10 columns. Uh, so let's use a while loop. I'm going to start with while, and we're going to create a variable. Let's first start with, uh, let's do column first. And I'm again, I'm naming this whatever I want uh, because uh, this is just a variable name. This is going to represent the number of the column. But again, I could call it this if I felt like it to represent as long as I know that that represents a column. So I'm going to say while C is less than or equal to 10 because I've got a total of 10 columns. Um, oh, don't forget your semi, your colon so that when you hit enter it automatically tabs it in, puts in a couple spaces. So this is the logic that's performed as long as this value right here is evaluated as true. So I better go up here first and give, I'm going to initialize Z, whoops, I always do that up arrow too many times. Okay, let's create C and initialize it to zero. While I'm at it, I'm going to make my row variable initialize it to zero. Um, honestly, I didn't have to do that because right here it would have created C and given it a default value of zero, but I just want to make sure you understand conceptually what's going on. So anyway, while C is less than or equal to 10, and then I'm going to have a loop inside that. Well, no, let's do this one at a time. Let's simply print out C, and then again, like we did before, let's increment C. C equals, we're going to assign C its previous value plus one. So when we run that, it goes, prints out 10. Um, after it prints out 10, it adds one, it becomes 11. This uh, comparison operator gets evaluated as false. Therefore, it skips this and moves on. Um, so what I want to do next is before I print out C, I'm going to have another while statement. 
while r is less than or equal to 10. And now I'm going to tab in this print c. I'm going to change it to, uh, let's print out something more like this so it looks like a coordinate point. I'm going to put in a, a parenthesis. We're going to, I don't want to space, so what I'm going to do is say concatenate c instead of comma c. And then let's concatenate onto that a comma with a space after it. And then I'm going to put in r to represent the row and concatenate a closing parenthesis onto it. So it's going to look like a coordinate point. So when I'm done, this is going to be an infinite loop if I don't also increment r and say r equals r plus 1. So what's going to happen, it's going to go in here and say, all right, c is not less than 10. True, so go inside. It immediately sees another loop. Another loop. r is still less than 10. It's true, so it's going to go inside here. Now it's going to print out c, which is initially 0, and then r, which is 0. So actually, maybe I want to initialize these to 1 each because there's no such thing as cell 0, 0. There's cell 1, 1. All right, so it's going to print out 1, 1. It's going to then add 1 to r, and it's not going to go to the c next, remember, because it's still in this inner while loop. It finishes this. It sees the next line is two spaces back, which is part of the previous loop. So after this line, it's going to go right back to this while statement again and say, OK, is r still less than 10? Yep, it's 2 after running this loop one time. So since it's still less than 10, it'll go back in here again, and it'll print out c, which is 1, 2 this time. Add 1, then 1, 3, 1, 4. And eventually, after 10 times, it's going to, r is going to be 10, and it's going to say, is r less than or equal to 10? Or sorry, it's going to get to 11. Then this will be evaluated as false. Then it'll skip these two lines and go straight to this line and say, add 1 to c and go back to the outer loop. Now, c is 2. Is it still less than 10? True. And then it proceeds to do everything on repeat. So let's go ahead and run that. Oh, what did I miss here? Uh, type must be string. Oh, because I've got plus signs, I always forget this. Uh, it thinks I'm trying to add these numbers, which are integers, to a parenthesis. You can't add a parenthesis to a number. It doesn't get that this is string concatenation. I have to formally put str around it right there and then also right here. I'm going to leave this error in the video so you guys can see my thought process and the error and the fix. All right. There we go. There's our coordinate points. Um, so why did it stop here at 10? I'm actually going to leave this um, little error in the video too and show you my fix. Here's why. So we got um, through this inner loop, we printed out 1, 10. We did add 1 to C, and we got back to here, and it says, is C still less than 10? Yes, it is. It's 2. So we went into the inner loop, and it said, well, R is less than or equal to 10. Well, the problem now is that R in the previous loop already got to 10. And so it says, well, R, or sorry, got to 11. R is not less than or equal to 10, so it skips this and went back and added 1 to C, and it's never getting back into this print line again. What that means is I need to reset and change uh, uh, R back to 1 each time. Every time I go through this inner loop and I'm done, I've got to go back and reset R to 1. I can do that either here or I could do it um, after the C plus 1. It wouldn't matter either way. But I have to tab it or, or bring it back here to line up with the C so that it knows this is not happening on the inside. Otherwise, it'll create an infinite loop. So now when I run this, what happens is I get to this line right here, which means it uh, has finished with this inner loop. This gets evaluated as false. It skips down, resets R to 1 again, then adds 1 to C, which is why we got 2 and 1 now. This is where R got changed to 1. This is where C got changed to 2. Went back to the outer loop and proceeded to redo everything again and again as we loop through. Okay. So this is nested loops, fairly complicated. However, uh, it's going to be worth it. We'll use these a lot. And I'll stop here on this video for now, but we'll go through some practice examples later on where we can use these in practical contexts.